Hey guys, welcome back to another Friday Reads. If you follow me on Twitter, you know that the flu has rampaged through my house. I am now getting sick, which is why I have this huge sweater on, but I need to get back on track. I've missed like four uploads so far this week um, between both channels and I'm ready to just suffer through. <laughs> I haven't done a book haul in quite a few months and I have, you can't see, but two stacks of books here to share with you. They just kept piling up and then with all the year end videos that I was already behind on and then the usual like TBR wrap up, I just wasn't able to fit them in yet, but I'm fitting them in today. Go grab a cup of coffee, tea, hot chocolate, whatever. So you're all cozied in and get ready for me to talk about a lot of books. I'm going to start off with the books I got in Owl Crate. I did subscribe to Owl Crate for three months and I did cancel because the best things in the box are obviously the books. Um, one of the months we did get a bookish planner which I forgot to grab mine which I actually didn't need. I wish I would have waited for my Owl Crate or knew that I was getting that, but I did already buy a bookish planner and this is like a full sized planner. The other one was like a pocket planner, although it would have worked perfectly fine. It was undated as well. I just handed that off to a friend so I don't have that to show you, but I bought this always fully booked planner from Little Inkling designs. She only sells these once per year. They go on pre-order in November. But she also has like a smaller um like specifically bookish companion type of planner. It's hard to explain. I'll link her Instagram down below so you can keep up on restocks of that. But this only goes on sale in November and you need to um, pre-order it and she sends it to you in December. Let me know if you want a full flip through of this but you do have like your bookshelves, your TBR. I just have some of the main goals or top books I want to read in the year. Favorite quotes and then each month, I'll show you January, has this these beautiful pages which are um, original art, I believe, from, um, I think her name is Megan, who makes this. And then you have a TBR for each month, as well as a list of new releases. And then at the end of each month, you have your bookish haul, your January, well, this is January, your wrap up, as well as space for all of your reviews. And there's lots more in here. There's coloring pages. Again, let me know if you want a full th flip through of this. I know that it's not really relevant to pick it up this year, but she does do slight changes each year. I've been loving this. I love having my TBR, everything in one place, and then on each day. So it's a horizontal weekly layout like this, Monday through Thursday, Friday through Sunday, and notes. You have your pages read here so you can keep track of how much you're reading per day. I've just been really loving this. That is why I wasn't ecstatic about getting one in Owl Crate. All that's to say is I've since canceled because all those trinkety little things, I'm in like a decluttering season in my life and I don't know if maybe I'm just getting too old for it or I'm not like nerdy geeky in a good way enough for that stuff like I don't have any bookish paraphernalia like around I'm not going to switch out like my living room decor to include a bookish quote pillowcase things like that I I don't know if you're picking up what I'm putting down. I'm not like hating on anyone that loves that stuff. I love watching other people get excited about those, but I honestly now just have an Owl Crate box over there on my bedside table that I've put all of the like trinkety things. And in my mind, it's cheaper for me to just buy the book that was in the box that I really wanted. You know? Okay. 
that was a lot of rambling. So I believe this was the November Owl Crate box. We got Amber and Dusk by Lyra Celine. I honestly have no idea what this is about. The back says, I deserved the chance to find where I belonged, to find a world forged in sunlight and hon honed on dreams, as perilous and intoxicating as the colors spilling jewel bright from my fingertips. This is beautiful. I don't know what it is about orange and purple, but this is catching my eye so much. We have purple font here on the edge. It really is beautiful. It says, an intoxicating tale of self-discovery and magic, both sinister and glamorous. It does seem like I would like it. I just don't know what it's about. And in that box, we got this exclusive excerpt for King of Fools by Amanda Foodie, which is the sequel to Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie, which, speaking of which, this was not in an owl crate, but I did buy Ace of Shades by Amanda Foodie in my secondhand bookstore, and this is in A City of Sin, which I thought was um, Vegas, but it isn't. It says, take a card, stake your soul. Survival is your only goal. Surrender to the vice within. Bet your life. Hope you win. What I gather from this is it is a city of sin similar to Vegas, but not actually Vegas. Like, this is a fantastical world, and you're in a casino setting. There's a drug mafia. It's very high stakes. Other than that, I'm not really sure. I'm excited to have gotten an excerpt of King of Fools because this doesn't release until the end of April of 2019 so if I wanted to I could read Ace of Shades and then get the first I think it's the first chapter or so of King of Fools. In the December Owl Crate we got Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nigan I believe is how you pronounce her last name. This is an Asian fantasy and I believe it's a standalone as well which doesn't happen very often correct me if I'm wrong and these girls are paper girls who are kind of like given over to the king there is definitely trigger warnings for things like sexual assault but one of the paper girls this girl who is special she was like chosen as an extra falls in love with one of the other paper girls from what I've gathered. I've heard mixed reviews. A lot of people love it. A lot of people said it was not very good. So I'm wondering where I will land on that spectrum. Can you guys even see what I'm holding? Wow, booktube fail. And in the last owl crate that I received, I got the Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chalks. Chokshi? Chokshi? I am terrible at pronouncing last names. This is in a fantasy world and there's a big heist. People have been comparing it to oh, Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, which I also got again from my secondhand store. I'll talk about that in a second. Actually, let's talk about them together. <laughs> I'm really excited for both of these books because I want to participate in the books with friends book club that Spencer from Common Spence and Chloe from Books with Chloe have started together. However, this month they are reading Six of Crows and I know they are saying you don't have to have read the Grishaverse trilogy first but that is a good introduction into the world so I'm actually reading that right now to catch up to read this. I won't have finished that trilogy plus this book in time for the live show but I can just watch it later and then in March they're reading The Gilded Wolves because they want to kind of compare the two and this is a new release that is really hyped up right now. So I do own both of them. I'm excited to read them both. Why I was laughing in regards to The Gilded Wolves is when they announced that this was going to be the book of the month for March I immediately like ran over to my library account online to place a hold on it and I thought I was being pretty fast but because this is a new release my library hasn't um, received any copies yet or bought maybe they bought them and haven't gotten them yet I don't know and I was like number 51 in line on the waiting list or something ridiculous like that 
that's not the exact number. And I was so frustrated. I was like, great, it's going to be another book that I'm not going to be able to read in time. I really wanted to participate because they're two of my favorite booktubers. I am such an idiot. This was in an owl crate that I hadn't yet like dealt with yet. Like I opened it. I was like, oh, cool. Closed it and set it aside. I haven't like thoroughly gone through it. And I did that last night and I was like, wow. So I would have been waiting at the library forever for a book that I already owned. Get it together. Okay, so those are the three books that I got from Owl Crate and two books I got from my used bookstore. During that trip to the used bookstore, I picked up four others as well. I picked up The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Books with Chloe put this in her favorite books of the year. So many people say this is one of their top favorite books ever. I really want to watch the movie, but of course I have to read the book first. I don't love this edition. People have much prettier editions. However, I don't know what it is about a floppy paperback, but that is my favorite. I prefer this format over a hardcover. It just feels so good in my hands, like, to read it. From what I know about this is there's a little girl who is a book thief, and she's kind of like rescuing the books from the Nazis who are just burning all of the books and she is like curating her own library. I'm not really sure. I suck at book hauls and TBRs because I don't like knowing too much about my books before reading them. I like a quick little sentence or two about the book, decide if I want to read it or not and go from there. I don't even like reading the full blurb on the back of books but I'm happy to have picked that one up. The last three are also parts of the series. So I picked up The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in the Raven Cycle, which is a four part series, I believe. I actually don't know what this is about, but again, I've heard that it's a favorite among booktubers. So I picked it up. I know books with books and Lala, Kayla, loves that series and she is not even a lover of fantasy. So I'm curious if I will love it too as a fantasy lover. I picked up This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. This is the first book out of the Monsters of Verity um, duology. I do not have this dark duet yet. In this world, your sins are manifested as real monsters, and the city is divided between basically the wealthy and the poor, but it's like people who are willing to pay for protection, pay for their freedom from the monsters essentially and those who are fighting against the monsters. And then I believe there's a love story between a human and a monster as well because the monster is not actually that bad but he was manifested out of a sin so he is a monster. In my last book haul I hauled The Crimson Crown by Cinda Williams Chima, which was the fourth book of this, se this series, the Seven Realms series. I found book three. They're not the same edition format, which may drive me nuts once I actually have a bookshelf to put them on. But since I'm just hauling them and packing them away in boxes until they're on my TBR, then I guess it doesn't really matter. But this is the Grey Wolf Throne, again, book three. Brittany the Bibliophile has been raving about the Seven Realms series. I'm so excited to pick up the first two books and get started on reading these. I know there's a companion series after this that is the Shattered Realms series, so you know it ends with a bang. I feel like I need to like elaborate on my packing my books up into boxes comment. My bookshelf is in the living room. I have small children. They were tearing my books off every single day, reading them roughly. So I just made the decision to pack them all up into boxes until I can get a bookshelf in my bedroom or they're a little older. And I put their books on my bookshelf along with like movies and stuff. Anyways. Next up at my grocery store, randomly enough, I saw A Simple Favor by Darcy Bell. I saw the preview to this movie that is coming out, which why, which is why it caught my attention. And actually this is like the movie edition, but it was 30% off. So I figured why not? I've been really 
trying to dip my toes in the more like chick lit contemporary genre because sci-fi and fantasy is just where my heart is but I feel like I would really enjoy more light-hearted easier reads from time to time. I feel like why I've had two major reading slumps in the last few months is because I'm reading so many high fantasy and sometimes you get a little like hungover after reading one of those books. Does that make sense? Does that happen to anybody else? So I'm trying to pick up some more lighthearted books. This was one of them. No idea what it's really about. Just that maybe your best friends aren't don't always have your best interests at heart. I went to Valley Village and I found two books. The first of which is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I think everyone knows what this is about. I'm super excited to have found it. I almost skipped over it because it is the mass market paperback edition, which is not my favorite, but it looks brand new. Like the spine is not bent in any way so I'm gonna have to read this like super gently if I love it I will get like the big floppy edition or a hardcover but I couldn't pass it up because I've never seen it at Valley Village before then or since then so I'm glad I picked it up Harry Potter lovers love this it's like the adult version of that apparently you are listening to Kavoth tell his story in a bar I believe or like he is storytelling so I've heard that this is really good to listen to an audiobook as well and he is a super powerful wizard he went to like a magic university so again it's like the adult version of Harry Potter I'm really excited to finally own that god knows and I'll actually read it but you know next I got wool by Hugh Howey I heard books with Emily Fox talk about this last year or the year before. This says it's the next Hunger Games. I believe this is an adult book though. This came from somewhere in Europe. The price is in euros which I find kind of funny. I don't know why I would just to find it in a small town in Nova Scotia, Canada and it came from Europe. I just found it kind of funny. It says in a ruined and hostile landscape in a in a future, few have been unlucky enough to survive. A community exists in a giant underground silo. Inside, men and women live an enclosed life full of rules and reg regulations. But some people choose not to conform. These are the people who dare to hope and dream. These are the dangerous ones. Jules is one of these people. She may well be the last. I've heard it's kind of scary and intense, but it sounds like something that I would really really enjoy it's like a it's a dystopian obviously but I think it's an adult dystopian I could be wrong though two more left I got the husband's secret by Leanne Moriarty I found this in my community book exchange like leave a book take a book situation I do have Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty as well which I still need to read I've owned that for quite a while these are adult thriller-ish, mystery-ish. They're kind of like that weird hybrid between like chiclet contemporary and like kind of thrillery at the same time. It's like the women's version of a thriller. Note my quotation marks, okay? Don't, don't get mad at me. <laughs> I'm really hoping I will like this. Again, this edition is different than the other one I have from Leanne Moriarty, which is probably going to drive me nuts. This is like really tall and skinny. I don't have any books this size. It's really weird. So here's a mass market paperback. They're the same width, but this one's like an inch taller. I find that kind of strange. Lastly, for my birthday, if you saw my birthday vlog, I showed this really briefly. Also, you will note that there are no books in here that I got for Christmas. I will link my Christmas, like what I got for Christmas video above. I do have, I did get books for Christmas if you're interested in those. These are the books I received both before and after Christmas. The only book I received for my birthday was The Virgin Cure by Amy McKay. This was from my grandfather. It has deckled edges, which I find to be really pretty but a pain in the butt to actually read. I've heard this is a little weird. I'm pretty wary about this. It says, I am Moth, a girl from the lowest part of Christie Street, born to a slumhouse mystic and a man who broke her heart. 
and it's set in 1871 in Lower Manhattan. So Amy McKay is the author of The Birth House as well, which I also own and have not read. So those were the 14 books plus an excerpt plus a planner that I have bought or received in the last few months with the exception of um, Christmas, as I mentioned. Let me know if you've read and love any of these books, which one I should try to pick up first. I'm really bad at buying books, being excited that I bought them, and then packing them away in boxes and not getting to them fast enough. Like I'm so focused on reading the books that I've had sitting the longest that I don't read the ones that I'm really excited for right now. I think I have a really good TBR for this month as it stands currently. But if you feel like there is a book that I really, really need to get to ASAP, let me know. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up so that I know. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!